Mortal Kombat 1 has a bizarre new glitch, but players actually like it? Should developers keep a bug in the game if some players prefer it? Let's talk about it. And then on top of that, it looks like Netherrealm is charging money for skins that were actually free. We're gonna discuss all that and more in today's video, but first, a special announcement. Cover C of my comic is officially done, so order your copy today, because this rare cover is only going to be sold on this Indiegogo campaign. Or in other words, once the campaign is over, you will never be able to get access to this cover. It's never going to be sold again. In case you're brand new to this channel, my comic book, Top Tier, is inspired by the fighting games that I know and love. There's over 40 pages of action and concept art, and every purchase gives you six free trading cards. And if we make enough sales, you'll actually get even more stuff for free. So click my link down below and order your comic today. You're not going to regret it. It's awesome. And back to the video, because another day means more Mortal Kombat 1 news. I'm covering it all the time on this channel. So if you want to stay up to date, then make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos. And then after watching, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below, it helps my channel out a ton. And without any further ado, let's begin. Starting off with the brand new glitch that dropped in a recent update for Mortal Kombat 1. And I actually wasn't aware of this until the comments section told me about it. Sorry for hitting you there, Mike. I'm sorry for hitting you. As it turns out, Trimmer is actually biased in Mortal Kombat 1 and becomes a better cameo character if you pair him with a ninja partner. It sounds hilarious, and is hilarious, but it's also 100% true and a very odd coincidence. For whatever reason that I can't figure out, if you pair Tremor with a ninja character and a couple other characters, I'll put them on screen, for some bizarre reason, Tremor just becomes a better character. Allow me to explain in more detail. In Mortal Kombat 1, Tremor recently dropped as DLC, and he's by far the most complicated cameo character in the game, with like 12 attacks in total. It's a lot. And that's because Tremor is the first character character in the game to have variations, which is a cool reference to Mortal Kombat X, the first game when Tremor was actually playable. And when you pick Tremor as a cameo partner, he starts off in the Aftershock variation by default. And in that form, Tremor has a launcher that is very unsafe on block, minus 16 for 90% of the characters. However, as mentioned earlier, if you pick a ninja character, then everything changes. For whatever reason, with these specific characters, Tremor's launcher becomes safe on block at minus 7, which is absolutely absurd and really strong. Just for some perspective, Sub-Zero's overhead is now completely safe on block, but still launches the opponent for a full combo, as long as you have Tremor. And the same is true for Scorpion. He now has a safe on block launcher, which has never been the case before, so a lot of the low tier characters just get better when you pair them with Tremor. And then to make matters more confusing, it's minus 8 for Kung Lao. And he's the only character in the game that it's minus 8. Everyone else, it's minus 16 or minus 7. Or in other words, for 90% of the roster, it's punishable, but then for this tiny group, it's safe on block, and then here's Kung Lao, who's barely unsafe on block. And that's why, personally, I do think this is a glitch. Why would Tremor have different frame data depending on which partner you give him, and why is it so consistently inconsistent? Let me know in the comments section what you think. Is this a glitch, or is it intentional by NetherRealm Studios? Because on the one hand, it does seem a bit random and unintentional. However, at the same time, it's oddly convenient that Tremor just works better for the lower tier characters like Sub-Zero and Scorpion and even Kung Lao. Could it be possible that Netherrealm made Tremor better just to help out the lower tier characters that are a bit lacking? It would be a bit odd if so, but it's also just so convenient that Tremor makes the lower tier characters better, but everyone else is unaffected. As you all know, I love making these videos interactive, so grab that keyboard and make your voices heard. Because next up, I'm going to drop a bit of a hot take. I think this glitch should stay in the game, at least for a little bit, because as mentioned earlier, it's only helping out characters that are actually low tier. Or in other words, Trimmer's weird glitch is actually helping to balance out the game a bit more. Now characters that were lacking are a bit stronger, and therefore the roster overall is more fair than it's ever been. Which means that ironically enough, if Netherrealm does fix this glitch, they're going to be actively making the roster less balanced, and therefore the game overall overall less fair. And that's why I personally don't think this glitch should be removed. Just turn a blind eye to it, Netherrealm, just ignore it, and let Sub-Zero at the very least keep this, okay? Sub-Zero deserves something special. However, all that being said, I want to play Devil's Advocate real quick, because technically, a glitch should never be allowed to stay in the game, especially when it's different for other characters because that makes it inconsistent and hard to understand for the average player. Because not every gamer is a super nerd like me who checks frame data for every single character. 
character, and as a result, they're gonna block Tremor's uppercut and go, oh, I can punish that. And 9 times out of 10, they're gonna be right about that. However, sometimes they'll face Sub-Zero, block that same uppercut, try to punish, and then just not get the punish, and be really confused because it's the same move. So on the one hand, I want this Tremor glitch to stay, because I see it as a net positive. It benefits the low-tier characters in Mortal Kombat 1. However, on the other hand, it is confusing. If you don't study Tremor's frame data for these characters, or if nobody told you that it's safe for some characters, how would you know? There's no way to know. So you know what? One more time, I'm going to ask you, the audience, to weigh in on this discussion, which I normally don't do. I normally don't ask you twice on the same topic to leave your opinion in the comments, but this time I have to. Do you think that Tremor's glitch should be kept in the game because it benefits low-tier characters, or do you think it should be removed because it's inconsistent, unintended, and honestly a bit confusing? Like I keep saying in all my news videos, I truly do read every single comment. People keep testing me in the comments and I keep catching you off guard. I'm being honest with you, I read every single comment, so grab that keyboard and make your voices heard. Because now finally, it's time for topic number two, and this one is a bit of a doozy. Could be a bit unethical, so I want to talk about it and hear your thoughts. As many of you know, it's season two in Mortal Kombat. Kombat 1 right now. The first season was the Season of Fire, and this current season is called the Blood Moon, or something like that. It's Natara's season. And as a result, everything is vampire-themed, and if you play through Combat League and the Invasion modes, you can unlock some very unique skins for every fighter in the game. And things were the same with Season 1, except it was fire-themed, right? It was Scorpion's colors for all the different characters. It was a fire theme for Season 1. However, what if I told you it was still possible to unlock these Season 1 skins? Well, I imagine you'd think that's pretty cool especially if you just didn't have time to grind invasions or the combat league matches, you can still get access to these skins. Pretty cool stuff, right? Well, it would be if not for the currency required. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Oh my god, dragon crystals. That's right, if you missed your chance to get the Season of Fire skins for your favorite character, well then, now you have to spend dragon crystals. And you might not know why it's a big deal if you're new to this channel or just don't play Mortal Kombat 1. The reason it's a bit of a big deal to spend dragon crystals to unlock unlock these skins is because these skins used to be free in the previous season, and the only way to get dragon crystals is to spend real world money. Or in other words, to put it more simply, Netherrealm is charging players real money to unlock skins that used to be free. You just had to play the game, but if you missed that window, now you have to spend money. Or maybe you just bought Mortal Kombat 1 recently, you're a bit late to the game, and you see these cool fire theme skins and say, oh, I want those, wait. I have to spend money. Okay, that's nothing crazy, but it is, because you might not be aware that those costumes used to be free. And that's why earlier I said it's a bit of an ethical dilemma, a bit of a moral gray area, if you will. Is it okay to charge money on skins that used to be completely free? Because on the one hand, it's just cosmetic, right? It doesn't affect gameplay or make anything unfair for players who can't afford it, but on the other hand, it was free content at one point, and if you missed that window and now want that costume, you have to pay money for something that used to be free. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, because recently I was on the Combat Kings podcast, and I joked that it would be cool if I could buy the invasion skin early without having to actually complete the entire invasion mode. Because for anybody not aware, when you complete invasion modes, you unlock the boss skin, which isn't just a palette swap, it's a brand new skin for a specific character. Here's Scorpion skin, and here's Natara skin. Overall, it takes a regular player between 6 and 8 hours to finish invasion mode, and I was joking saying, you know, how about just give me the skin if I can buy it. And keep in mind, I was joking at the time, but I was also a bit serious because I spend a lot of time in my day making these videos or just running errands, cleaning my house, working out. So after all of that, I don't have much time to grind invasion mode. And so I was like, just give me the boss skin. Okay, so just let me purchase the boss skin to save some time. Similar to how in Mortal Kombat X, you could buy the entire crypt for $20 if you wanted to. The reality is some players have more free time than others, and some players don't want to grind the game, so having the option to buy the skin instead of grinding should be okay, but I want to know your thoughts down below, because charging for skins that you unlock versus, you know, unlocking them by grinding, which one is fair, which one is ethical? I suppose one more time I'll play Devil's Advocate. I'm okay with charging money for these skins if we get free DLC content in the future, because that's what Overwatch did, and I think it balanced things out. For anyone not aware, Overwatch was infamous for its loot boxes, right? If you wanted skins or some cool 
cool cosmetics in the game, then you had to spend money or just grind a ton to get the loot boxes. However, the silver lining was every DLC content was free. Whether it was a character or a brand new map, all of it was free. So I'm just saying, if you want to charge players for cosmetics that used to be free, that might be okay as long as you give the players something free in return. One last time, I know I keep asking, please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, it really does help my channel out a ton. And then finish that combo by subscribing and ringing that bell so you never miss any future videos. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.